Welcome to Port Royal, Virginia. Truly a gem that sits on the side of the Rappahannock River. This town has over 300 years of history that you're going to learn a little bit about throughout the day. It started out with the Algonquin Indians. Then it was chartered in 1744. You also have a place where George Washington himself stayed and where John Wilkes Booth came after assassinating President Abraham Lincoln. Welcome to History Underground. We're here on the shores of the beautiful Rappahannock River, right on the edge of Port Royal, with Miss Cleopatra Coleman. Give us a timeline. Walk us through the history that started right here at the port, and tell me why this port is so important to Port Royal. I do have a passion for history, and I do know something of the history of this river and its importance to this town. After all, the river served as the foundation, the reason really for the founding of the town's importance, really, years and years ago. The first uh, inhabitants, of course, along the banks of this beautiful river were the Native Americans. Their villages were along these banks. They were soon followed, of course, by immigrants from Europe, particularly from Scotland and from England. And those first families of colonial Virginia began to build their wonderful homes along the banks of the Rappahannock River. In my mind, I imagine a native warrior many years ago standing on the banks of this river, looking down upon its waters and noticing the ebb and the flow of the river and whispering into the refreshing air around the river, Rappahannock, Rappahannock. And you know, those first immigrants then to this land, when they came, accepted the name that that warrior had given this area. It's always been a potent, a powerful partnership here between the peoples who lived along its coast. It has been, it has provided really food for the people. Its occasional floodings have enriched the soil here. It's provided a recreational outlet, not just for those Native Americans, not just for the immigrants, but for people all along the timeline. It's been the economic engine, really, of this area. Ships came here from Glasgow and from London, bringing materials into this village here on the river. And then they left Port Royal, going back, carrying a cargo of the sweet Virginia tobacco that had been grown in plantations along the bounties bountiful shores of this river. Recreational outlets were provided too. Economic, as I've indicated, were there. It's just made the difference and provided the foundation for a people long ago, and then even into the area, the timeline of the Civil War. This was an important place Confederate forces were here, and then the federal gunboats came down the river. The Union forces came down and pushed the Confederates out, evacuated the town, took over this area as their depot. They brought supplies in, carried wounded soldiers out. 
So it has served, uh, you know, even during the battles of our country's history. And even today, it still plays a very, very vital role in our country. In the background here, you'll see a home that's been here for a long time. It's the home of our current mayor. The Heim Heimbach family live there. It too has an important history in this town because it served as the home of the only commissioned officer during, female commissioned officer that is, during the Civil War, Captain Sally Tompkins. She of course was a nurse in a hospital in Richmond and they had a very sterling record during the Civil War, preserving the lives of many soldiers who had been wounded and brought in. She lived here in Port Royal. And so it is one, it, the home, is one of the many treasures that we have here in Port Royal. I live in a home at the top of the hill here on King Street. Many years ago, my grandfather, who was born in 1833, in a plantation along the shores of the Rappahannock River, brought his mule and his sleigh out on the frozen Rappahannock River and cut out cubes of ice blocks, which he then carried back to his home, his ice mines, uh, ice mine really, along the way. So this river has, has served and has served well and still today continues to serve the people who inhabit its shores. It has meant and continues to mean a great deal to the town of Port Royal, and not just to this town, but to this region as well. Port Royal served as the commercial center, really, of Caroline County. We've had a time that has been enriched by the fact of the many taverns that were here that served not just as a place to spend a night, but also served as community centers. We had a very important lady during the colonial period, uh, Captain Queen Dolly, she was called, really. So business was carried on in those taverns and many of those taverns that inhabited Port Royal. And um, decisions were made that affected not just the village of Port Royal, but affected the county and the region as well. So this river has meant so much to the town of Port Royal, the county of Caroline. It is a powerful symbol of who we are. And I'm reminded as I view the river of the poetic words of Langston Hughes, who wrote long ago, I have known rivers, ancient as the world, older than the flow of human blood. I've known rivers, ancient, dusty rivers, my soul grows deep like the river. Wow. Mm. That, um, that really took me through a very good vivid imagery of everything you were saying. Mm. It's like you've done that before. <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> the, uh, the point I wanted to to kind of touch on a little bit, real quick. Tell me the story about the pirate that came mm. up these waters. And there's mm. actually a inlet not too far from here Indeed that's, so. na that's named Indeed after so. him. Indeed so. That's part of the fantastic and glorious history of our area as well. Pirates were an industry, really, <laughs> in our country years ago. And so we had our own local pilot, pirate, I mean, who came up the waters of the creek and, and this river and then the waters of the creek, and he was captured. People were sick and tired of his coming in and robbing and stealing things, and so some folk laid a trap for him and caught him up the creek, really. <laughs> and, uh, 
Newman's Creek, it's called, Newman's End Creek. And so we've had that part of our history too in, here in Port Royal, having to do with the river. And even today, there is activity, great activity on this river. Skiers and gravel boats and sailing and all kinds of livelihood still being made and enjoyed on this river. That is a heck of a story. Wow. Um, Cleo, thank you so much. That has been one of the greatest stories I've ever listened to. <laughs> to Bless be you. with you. Bless you. That it's was so the real wonderful. story or part of the real story of this historic town and this historic river. Miss Cleopatra Coleman, living history. Right now, we're gonna move farther into town. We're gonna to meet three other historians. I just wanna give you some of the inside looks about other fascinating points of this town and what truly makes it a Virginia gem. Our next stop on our walk through history of Port Royal is here at the Museum of Medicine, which was actually built in 1851, but the town itself was noted as being kind of the medical central point for the area of King George and Caroline County. It had three doctors over its lifetime. And we're here with Mike Newman, who's actually the town crier. Now, some of you guys may not know what that means, but it doesn't mean he whined a lot. Uh, <laughs> no, he, uh, town criers typically were the ones who um, told people of major happenings in the, the village or town itself back in, way back in the day. So Mike, thanks for having us and uh, tell us. Tell us the great history of this office. Glad to have you here. Actually, there was a, has been a physician in the area of Port Royal since approximately 1723, uh, practicing somewhere in the environs and probably even in the town itself. Uh, doctors would be practicing from their homes, maybe even from the back of a tavern, a shop or whatever. Uh, it wasn't until 1851, though, that they actually had a place where they would actually practice medicine and people could come. So this building was erected across from St. Peter's Episcopal Church, uh, which still stands uh, adjacent across from that. And it was in such poor condition that the owners were considering burning it down. Historic Port Royal thought they could save it. They took it apart, brought it to this lot, put it back together. Some of the uh, elements of reconstruction of the, well, reconstruction are parts used from the original building, but of course a lot of it has had uh, newer materials, but been done as close to accurate as, as they could for a 19th century building. I mean, the beaded, uh, beaded siding, uh, the floors, everything, the doors, you know, they tried to, tried to keep it true, true to what it would have looked like in the 1850s. Now, so you actually have some people that still live in this town that were patients in this very office. Oh yeah, not only that, people have come in here, uh, several weeks ago we had it open for tours, and it was amazing, at least seven, eight people from King George and different parts of Caroline County came in that had been treated or had relatives treated in this office by, by physicians. I found that really interesting. You know, they could come in and tell you well, what, where things were, how things were set up in here, look at these instruments here and say, oh, I remember that, you know? Right, <laughs> yeah, right, so, right. Yeah. yeah you, I mean, you can really tell by, by coming in here, you know, some of the more archaic ways, yes. if you will. Yes. Of um, extracting tonsils. You yeah. Know? Um, oh. I, know, I know you guys have a joke about it. It's like, you know, do you still have your tonsils? And you show this, you know, <laughs> yeah. medieval looking device. Yes, we do. Uh, what was amazing, though, was uh, the nurses, practicing nurses that would come in here and just be, I mean, they fell in love with this place because of the, the equipment they would see in here that they maybe had heard about and all, but had never really seen. And, uh, I mean, they would get on the phone. I actually saw them get on the telephone and call other 
medical professionals say, you need to come in here and look at this, you know? Right. And uh, it was just a lot, I mean, it was a great day. It was a lot of fun. And uh, Now, the, explain a little bit about the importance of this particular doctor's office as it relates to the history of Port Royal. Uh, well, for one thing, it, uh, as I said, it's centralized. We had an actual doctor's office. You know, rather than searching out for a doctor, there was a doctor here, if there's a problem, you know, you could come in. Uh, two thirds of the building was actually a waiting room. And, uh, you know, the doctor would see you now and they would come in here and whatever treatment needed to be done, if it could be done locally, was. Uh, I really don't, I mean, more, I mean, it did everything from tonsillectomies, I'm pretty sure, to appendectomies. Something maybe more involved may have had to go uh, to a more specific, maybe a larger hospital. But I think for everyday arms, splints, uh, like I said, uh, tonsillectomies, things like that, it could be done here. You know, setting of bones, that kind of thing. Diagnoses, you know. And it was really important to have a doctor's office considering you had 20 taverns in the town? Well, yeah, in, <laughs> colon no, in colonial times, apparently there were over 50 taverns. Oh, wow. Okay, wow. and you had, but that was, of course, before this office, but, I mean, you had, it was important that we had physicians here because you figure you've got 50 taverns and this was a tobacco port and you had ships coming in from all over the world, mainly Britain because of the tobacco, but I mean, you had a lot of bar fights, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> at set dues. So a doctor's, you know, doctor's office was an important thing to have, uh, centrally located, so. Wow, now I, one of the things you have in here that, that you know, really kind of cracks a lot of people up is if you ever wonder why your great-grandparents had such a great childhood, well, that's because one of the primary ingredients in the medicine was heroin. <laughs> you know? Oh, uh, that was just one of them. We have several uh, cards here advertising elixirs and things that would help your child sleep better, mm -hmm. uh, calm them down, or charge them up if they <laughs> or were lethargic, and opioids, uh, apparently, and uh, Heroin, other things uh, are advertised, you know, for your children. And like one of the things says, you wonder why your your grandparents have such fond memories of their past. Well, when you see what <laughs> see what they were we were drugging up on, you can imagine they remember that how good it was. You're surprised that they remember anything. Oh, absolutely. Some of these I things. mean, especially now that we know yeah. the dangers of the all dangers those drugs. Of it. Yeah. Wow. It's it just really a testament to how much things have changed and how science has improved and moved forward and yeah, telling us the dangers they, of all that. When they found out the dangers of some of these things, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it was an expedient at that time, thought it was an expedient uh, remedy for everyday children's problems. You know, overactive, you know, mm -hmm. children and children that uh, were lethargic. You know, you had something you could pop something to them and, you know, liven them up, I guess. Now, do you know of when the building was moved? Uh, that is, I think, about six, seven years ago, uh, maybe a little before that. I remember being involved in, you know, some of the, the, the building of it and taking things out and storing some of the things that were contributed to us. Uh, some of the medical devices, we had them in storage for a good while. And I believe it's about six, seven years ago that, that you know, we started on, on this building. It may have been a little more than that, but I've right. been on the, I was on the board here at HPR for like 13 years and then took a hiatus because I think they needed new blood, new ideas, and then they asked me to come back. So after a couple of years off, but so uh, there was a gap in there. Do you know of any artifacts or relics that were found on the property as they were picking everything up and moving it? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, a lot of these things were brought in from people that had them in storage, but I don't know of any actual artifacts. Most of these things were uh, given by people like Herbert Collins, who gave us this wonderful clerk's desk here. 
uh, other people's families, some of the physicians' families gave us things, you know. We have a helmet over there from World War I that one of the doctors wore. Uh, and, you know, and these instruments, you know, were given by people that had them in storage in places. They, it was amazing what would show up, what people would bring, you know, when they found that there was a place that could, that wanted to display the artifacts. So Mike, you have a story that you can tell us about John Wilkes Booth connection to Port Royal okay. and the doctor here, oh. Dr. Eckert. Yes. Tell us about it. Okay. Uh, when John Wilkes Booth was fleeing and finally made it into Virginia from Maryland, uh, he stopped at a couple of places, but Port Royal, when he came across the river, he tried to gain access to at least one house here that is still standing and maybe two uh, where he was refused entry. He went up what is now presently 301 to the Garrett farm uh, where they thought he was he was a soldier returning from the war and he, he stayed uh, for several days. Uh, He took refuge in a tobacco barn there. He was living in the house, but there was something not quite right about him, and so they, uh, the Garrett decided he maybe ought to go into the tobacco barn. And they actually locked him in, him and his compatriot, uh, not because they were afraid of him, but they were afraid that the horses would be stolen. The horses were a very valuable commodity at that time. Uh, the cavalry closed in. They went to Port Royal and found out they'd gone right by him. They came back, they surrounded the barn, uh, and decided to burn them out. And that's when Booth came out, and he was shot. And it was Dr. Urquhart from Port Royal that was called up to the Garrett farm to look, look at Booth and see how badly he was wounded. Dr. Urquhart. Booth is carried and laid under a tree. Dr. Urquhart looked at him, said the, the wound is mortal. He is not going to live very long. At that point, they moved him to the porch of the Garrett house. And uh, he lived till morning. I believe it was somewhere around 9, 10 o'clock. He looked at his hands and said, useless, useless, and he died. And uh, of course, they captured Harold, who was his compatriot, but uh, that's where our, you know, our physician from, from Port Royal, Dr. Urquhart, uh, actually, he is buried in the churchyard of St. Peter's. So, wow. Well, Mike, thank you again for all of this great information. And you guys can see how Port Royal has played, so far, many key points in our America's history, starting from the Native Americans, uh, even some pirate history, and even an assassin. So next we're gonna head up to a gallery and see some beautiful paintings that'll tell a little bit more about the story of Port Royal. We brought you over here to the town hall in Port Royal to meet a very interesting gentleman. He's been having us laughing up until now. Mr. Herb Collins. Oh, sorry Herb. Can't call you mister. <laughs> uh, Herb Collins, the major benefactor here in the town of Port Royal. He's actually had 20 some, uh, 25, I believe, portraits commissioned. No, that, we, have, we have about 100 all together. Oh, 100 of them all together. In the museum in storage in here, we have about 100 portraits. Hanging here in the town hall, uh, I, I see about 25. And each of these individuals have a very intimate history with the town of Port Royal. We're going to tell you about a few of them, but we also challenge you to make a trip down here to find out more about the rest. Herb, thanks for, for being on the show. You, you have a magnificent background, and you have a tremendous amount of knowledge on each and every one of the individuals in this room. Right. Tell me, which one is your favorite? I don't have any favorites. They're all of my favorites. I wouldn't have them in here if they hadn't been my favorites. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, I understand one of these portraits actually has a signer of the Declaration of Independence. That's uh, John Penn, 
His father was Moses Penn. He wasn't a very good father to him. He died when John Penn was a, a young boy. And uh, Edmund Pendleton, whose portrait is in here, uh, raised him. And he uh, signed the Declaration of Independence from North Carolina because he went there later in life. He was, uh, he was not loyal to the crown. They fined him a penny, which is the least they could find him. He got insulted and went to North Carolina. You have a, a lady's portrait in here who is connected to Harry S. Truman's wife. That's right, Bess Truman. That's Margaret Hawkins Boutwell. And the Hawkins family and the Boutwell family, both are Port Royal families. And when were they, when were they living here? They were here uh, in the 1700s. Port Royal was founded in 1744. Now you also have a, a particular reverend that has a... a reverend uh, story. James Cyrus, uh, who uh, lived in the town of Port Royal. Uh, he was on the uh, government here in the town of Port Royal. He was a postmaster here, and he was uh, a minister of the African-American church here in Port Royal. And how long did he live here? Well, he was uh, here about the end of the 19th century. You were telling me a little bit earlier about really the, how Port Royal was majorly significant along the Route 3 corridor. Right. Uh, that was, uh, it was on King's Highway, which connected all the colonial capitals from uh, Boston to Charleston, South Carolina. And Port Royal was right on the root of it, which brought uh, notables like uh, uh, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, and George Washington's brother-in-law who married Fanny uh, uh, Colonel Bassett. They stayed here in Port Royal. And where did they stay at around here? Where did they stay here? They stayed at uh, Fox's Tavern, and uh, the, they're building this now, the print shop. Both of those were taverns at one time here at Port Royal. Now the post office, you were telling me, is that- It's the oldest continually operated post office. We started out under, under Benjamin Franklin. And you, uh, people don't realize that Benjamin Franklin was postmaster in Canada as well as in the colonies because at that time, Canada was a colony. Now, do you, did Benjamin Franklin ever visit Port Royal? No. No. Okay, he was his postmaster, but that post office is still operating. That's correct. Wow. Port Royal was always called Port Royal, except during the uh, Revolution for about three years. They didn't think that, that was very befitting because we were fighting the royal government, so they uh, used the name Port Roy for about three years during the revolution after the Roy family, but it wasn't originally named for the Roy family. Now, you've written multiple books. I've written 25 books. Wow. Tell us about the one that's, that's right here. That's uh, Caroline County Estates, has photographs of uh, the buildings, the churches, and historic sites in, in Caroline County, and the photographs were gotten, uh, they were acquired from uh, across the United States as far away as uh, California. Wow. Now, I understand you have, you've met a couple of presidents in your time. I met all of them from uh, uh, Truman's to, to uh, the Bushes. I was on television covering uh, Bush's uh, inauguration with Dan Rather. Wow. And that's the senior Bush. And I've known all the first ladies from uh, the second Ms. Woodrow Wilson all the way through to the Bushes. And you were telling me that there's a president that's buried with your socks and shirt on? That's uh, Dwight Eisenhower. <laughs> wow. Tell, us, tell that story. That's a good one. Dwight Eisenhower, when Gawler Funeral Home prepared him and buried him in his uniform, they were missing the shirt and socks. And so they, they borrowed, got those from me. They didn't borrow them because I'd never get them back. But uh, they had my laundry mark in them. <laughs> wow. 
Uh, that has to be the, the, the best claim to fame I've ever heard. That's what uh, <laughs> Senator Mark Warner said here at Port Royal when they had Herb Collins stay here. They have a day named after you. Beg your pardon? They, they have a Herb Collins day. They did here at Port Royal. It's the only wow. time they've had such. Oh, we got to fix that. Tell me about a couple of more of these of these portraits. <coughs> well, uh, we got uh, Mr. Garrett from Garrett's Farm, uh, and where Booth was captured, and they would go hang Mr. Garrett. They had a rope on the tree to hang him, and his son begged for his life, so they they uh, they saved him. We got. Uh, General Magruder here, he lived in Port Royal, the Magruder family did, and uh, he was in the Mexican War, and uh, he was also in the Confederate Army, and the citizens of Caroline presented him with a sword, which is now in the Smithsonian. We got a portrait over the door there of number 13, that's uh, Colonel George Armstead, he commanded uh, Fort McHenry uh, when the British uh, attacked Fort McHenry, and he was there when the flag was flying. It inspired uh, Francis Scott Key to write the Star Spangled Banner, and he was born and raised down here about 25 miles from Port Royal. That's a tremendous amount of history. We it got uh, 14, it's Judge Lomax, and he signed the uh, separation when we succeeded from the Union, and when he signed it, he uh, wept and he said he never thought that he would outlive his nation. And we got uh, number two is uh, Colonel John Baylor. He was uh, John Baylor III. He lived down the road uh, and owned the place and was kin to uh, George Armstead at New Market plantation here, and uh, his father was uh, also uh, Colonel John Baylor, and he uh, imported more slaves in Virginia than any other one person. About half of the, of the slaves that came into Virginia, uh, he imported them, and uh, John Baylor uh, was interested. He went to England and studied at Putnam uh, College there and as a young man, and uh, he got interested in horse racing. He went to the racetrack there, which was New Market in England, and he brought back thoroughbred horses. When he died, there were 100 thoroughbred horses in his stables down at New Market, and one of them was Fur Knot, which was considered the most famous horse, race, uh, horse in uh, colonial uh, Virginia. Well, Herb, I don't, I don't want to tell them everything, because then they won't have anything to come here and see. But thank you so much for, for your, your donations to this town, your contributions. Uh, you are every bit of a good reason why this town is a gem of Virginia. Well, my heart is right here in Port Royal. Most of my ancestors lived here in Port Royal. So we brought you over to the Port Royal Museum of American History. We're going to wrap up today by talking to Miss Carolyn Davis, and she's going to kind of give us some of the artifact history that really helped shape this town. Oh, and I forgot to mention, she's affectionately called Cookie. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Cookie. Welcome to the Museum of American History. Thank you. We are delighted to have you here on Roof 301 today to show you some of the things that we've found. I'm going to start with the Arrowhead collection here, which most people really love to see, because one woman is a Skinner, and she has her name done in Arrowhead, collected over 10,000 right here on the Rappahannock River. Wow. Her house was on the water. She walked the fields where the farmers plowed, and when you turned over the land, the, sh the shine, the glow would show, and she collected them. So we're very proud to have this collection given to us by her sons. She has, is deceased 
Yeah? But we have wonderful things from the biggest stones to the grinding stones and uh, all in her collection. We also know that Ms. Skinner was in on the jig at Camden Farm when silver medallions for the king were made for the kings of, for Powhatan and people like that, made by the king in England to give. As, uh, and two of them were found on Camden Farm. Wow. Which is very rare. So would that would have would have that meant that that particular chief was given to, or would that mean that there was two separate chiefs that? I that is a question we don't know the oh, answer okay, to. Okay. We're no, really not enough, sure who they were given to at this point. Okay. But history tells us they were made to be given to chief to chiefs. Now we had Mattapanai. These were all the Indians of the Rappahannock. The Mattapanai and the Chickahominy were in this area also, and they crossed you know, with the arrow. Um, so we have many different ones. But the interesting thing about Mrs. Skinner was she made these lovely portraits by designing things and uh, putting not only her name as she did there, but she could do an owl, she could do a duck, she could do a beaver, and just wonderful things for Thanksgiving. We bring out a turkey, a beautiful turkey that she's made. So. This is a very wonderful uh, donation by her family, and we've been very appreciative of it. Uh, we can't even put them all on display. We have that many. Wow. And so as we come on down, I would like you to see uh, some more things that we have here that talk about the early days following the Indians. We had the colonial period at Port Royal, and this is Roy's warehouse. Roy's warehouse was right here on the river, and uh, by 1727, the county was formed, and this warehouse was already here. And of course, everything belonged to England in those days. It was a royal warehouse, and uh, the people that ran it had to get permission in Williamsburg to run it. And all the, the tobacco that was brought in in these barrels called hogsheads were rolled down the road from the plantations. Now this rolling road became Route 301, goes right to the river and crosses. So Roy's Warehouse, the really interesting thing to me is that one of the first people to run this when Mr. Roy died was his wife. She got special permission from Williamsburg, from the House of Burgesses, to run it as a woman, and we think that's the first woman in business in the new country. So we're very proud of her. Here we have artifacts that might have been used or, uh, in that area, and that many of which have been found. And uh, as we go on down, knowing more about the river transportation and how important that was, we find that in the next period, there was another form of transportation that was equally important for us here at Port Royal, and this is the stagecoach line. And we have here a stagecoach coming into the Wolf Ark stage lines at Green Falls. And this painting here and this copy here are all done by Sidney King. Uh, there is a much larger one, but this one for our exhibit shows the uh, 1770 English blunderbuss that would have been kept under the seat, you see. And then this, some people don't know, is these are stairs for ladies like me with the big dress, and it hooks right under the seat there. Now, did the women wear a lot of heels back then? Because that looks a little... Uh... <laughs> no, they didn't wear many heels in those days. Very little, I'm told. Uh, you were on your feet a lot in colonial days, you know, but the blunderbuss, the horn that was blown, the doll case that the children would have carried their precious china dolls in as they went. And uh, in this collection, we also have the farm life, the rural life is shown here by Sidney King. And uh, we have other paintings in the museum. He was a friend of Herb Collins, who has collected many of the things that you'll be seeing today. And uh, we're very pleased to have these things here in a museum. Well, um, 
You have a, a few things from AP Hill. I, I do. I that, do. Uh, big Army military base right up the road. Well, they took 77,000 acres of this county, and this was in the 19, early 1940s, and we needed a base to train soldiers. So we've all accepted that now, but for a while it was difficult for some people right. because they had to sell acres of land and houses and move, and much of it was destroyed. Today there's only one house of a family still there, and it was used for offices and doesn't even look the same, right. and one school and one church right. that were preserved. Uh, but in the meantime, we have some artifacts that I'd like to show you. Silver War, in Civil War days here. This is a diorama made in Irvington of the, the Pratt Farm, Camden. And you'll see the house here. This house took fire from the river of the uh, northern boats. And they actually knocked that coupler off and it was never put back. But the rest of the house is there and has been kept beautifully. The original curtains are still in the parlor. The original curtains, it's been kept that well and is in the same family today. Route 30, Route 17 runs through this area and Fort A.B. Hill is in the wooded area today. So as we move on through some more Civil War things, I have quite a few things over here that I'd like you to see about the Civil War. And we have a carbine here, a Spencer carbine, which was the type used by Booth at Garrett's farm. We have other Civil War souvenirs and things here, but we have some actual money uh, from this from the Confederacy here, and all sorts of little mini balls and other things that have been dug up in the area and found. We have belt balls, we have a cannonball. But one of the most interesting things we have, I love this, if you'd help me hold it up a little bit, this is an actual hinge from the barn where Booth was discovered and killed. And as you can see, it's rather heavy. Yeah. It's documented. Sidney King, the artist, went out to do some paintings for the Park Service, and they le allowed him to actually keep the hinge and put it into some of his work. And I have pictures here that he has done. This is one where you can see that same hinge right here, the long hinge oh, sure. at the top of the barn where he was captured. And Today, all of that, of course, belongs to A.P. Hill, and the house is gone. There's not even a brick left. They told an interesting story for years that if you wanted to get rid of bricks, just dump them out there on Route 301, and they'd all be gone by morning because people would, were getting a brick from, from uh, the foundation of that house. The sign is there. Someone stole it not too many years ago, and two years ago had to be replaced. But uh, it does tell the story of Richard Henry Garrett's farm and uh, the fact that he really thought he was just helping a buddy of one of his children. He had no idea that the man had killed Lincoln because communication was not fast like today. Right, right. makes a big difference. But we have Sidney King, who has painted so many historical pictures that shares what the history was really like and what things were like in those days. And that's a self-portrait where he's painting a painting. And uh, if you look, you can see the battleships and things. And that's his home. He did come here to Caroline uh, when times were tight in Boston and uh, looking for work as a sign painter is how he started out. And then Jamestown discovered him, and he did all kinds of wonderful big boat uh, posters and things for them outside. So he's been a friend to Herb Collins and a friend to us with the things that we have. Today we have had a wealth of knowledge about the wonderful Virginia gem that is Port Royal, Virginia. I invite you to come down and see a lot of the other artifacts that are here. They actually have a replica of the writing desk that Thomas Jefferson used to draft the Declaration of Independence. They have a whole room of authentic White House china from multiple presidents. They have another whole room full of furniture 
period furniture. The craftsmanship is, is amazing. So I thank you for joining in. And I thank Miss Carolyn Davis, Cookie. You are so welcome. Uh, for allowing us come to come visit. Today. But we definitely invite you to come and see Port Royal and learn some of the other history that we didn't mention today. Appreciate your time.